let's look at the electronic configuration of atoms. That means, where are the electrons? Which layers are they in? When we look at electronic configuration, we look at the electronic arrangement in the atom. Remember, electrons are negatively charged particles located outside of the nucleus in orbits, in layers. The electron has energy, potential energy, because of its attraction to the positively charged nucleus. As you know, opposites attract. There are seven main energy levels, we call them shells, in which the electrons can be found. These are going to be indicated by the concentric spheres around the nucleus. I'm only going to show a portion of the sphere as a parenthesis. That will be where we're going to place the electrons. We know that the energy of each shell is associated with the distance from the nucleus of the electrons in that shell. That is due to a force of attraction between the positive and the negative charge. That is a type of potential energy. We also know that these electrons like to fill the lowest shell and then work their way up. I think of it like a hotel. If you're at the bottom floor, that has the lowest energy, and as you go up, it takes more and more energy. Now, if you have a lot of luggage and no elevator, you're going to pick the bottom floor, and then the next floor, and the next floor, and the next floor. And that's what the electrons do. But it ends up that sometimes a floor gets too crowded, so somebody might jump up one extra floor. We're going to talk about how we know whether it jumps an extra floor or not. But before that, we need to know how many electrons fit on each of these floors or shells. So as you can see, each shell gets larger and larger. As we go out to higher numbers, we can hold on to more electrons. But how many electrons can it hold? Well, it ends up that there is a relationship between the size of the shell and how many electrons there are, and it is related to the number of that shell. The maximum number of electrons per each shell is 2n squared, where n is the shell number. The shell number is the period number. So let's figure out the maximum for each shell. So we have seven shells, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And in the first shell, we're going to have two n squared, where n is equal to one. So again, we're going to write those numbers down. Two times one squared is two. Then we go to the second shell. We see two times two squared is eight. In the third shell, n is equal to 3, so it's 2 times 3 squared, we get 18. And for 4, we get 2 times 4 squared, because we're in the fourth shell. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. And in the fifth shell, we have 2 times 5 squared, which is 50. And for this class, that's as far as we go. We stop at the fifth shell. But we can go ahead and figure it out for the sixth shell. The sixth shell would be 2 times 6 squared, so 6 squared is 36, times 2, we get 72 electrons is the maximum. And for the seventh shell, 2 times 7 squared, which is 2 times 49, or 98 electrons, is the maximum number of electrons that we could find in the seventh shell. It's important to note that in the seventh shell, I could have 98 electrons, but that doesn't mean I have to have that many. So in my bank, I could have $100,000 but I don't necessarily have to have that amount, and I probably don't. If I only have $10, the maximum at the bank is still 100000 but I only have 10 so I'm going to put those 10 in. Now, where do those first electrons go? Remember, they always go to the lowest energy level first. So we're going to place them in those lowest energy levels, and then we're going to fill up as we go. Again, I'm going to talk to you about how we know exactly where the electrons are on the next page. So far, we know how to find the total number of electrons by using the atomic number. And we know what the maximum number of electrons per each shell is. But we want to know how many electrons are actually in each of those shells. And what is the last shell that has electrons? Remember, every atom has seven shells. But if I don't have to go out to the seventh shell, I'm not going to because the, atom, the electrons are lazy. They want to stay at the lowest energy level. Okay, electrons aren't really lazy. When we have electrons in a shell, we call that an occupied shell. And the one with the last shell that has electrons in it, we call the valence shell. The electrons that are in that valence shell are called valence electrons. So valence electrons are the 
electrons found in the outermost occupied shell of any atom. So, we use the periodic table to find the valence shell. That is the outermost occupied shell of whichever atom you're looking at. And how we use it is we look at the period number it's in. So whatever period it's in, that is the outermost occupied shell of that atom. So period 1 has only electrons in shell 1. Period 4 has electrons in shell 1, 2, 3, and 4. Nothing in 5, 6, or 7. Yes, those are available, but there are no electrons present in those shells. So if we look at tin, we can see that it is in the fifth period. So it has 5 as its valence shell. It'll have electrons in shells 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now you try bromine. What is the valence shell for bromine? Hopefully you got 4. Don't forget that the first period, even though it's not right above the bromine, there is a period above it, so it's in the fourth period, which means it has 4 shells filled, with the fourth one being the outermost shell that has electrons. So now we know how many electrons there are by using the atomic number. We know how many shells are being used or, or are occupied, and that's by the period number. And now we want to know how many electrons actually go in the valence shell. In order to determine that, we're going to look at the group number to determine the number of electrons that go in the valence shell. So group 1 gets one valence electron. Group 2 gets two valence electrons. Group 3, three valence electrons. 4 gets four valence electrons. 5 gets five valence electrons. 6 gets six valence electrons. 7 gets seven valence electrons. And group 8, A, gets eight valence electrons. These are all of our A group elements. So how many valence electrons does oxygen have? That's correct. It should have six valence electrons. So does sulfur, selenium, tellurium, polonium, and livermorium. And that is because they are in group 6A. And how many valence electrons do you expect for gallium? We find that it's in group 3A, so it will have three valence electrons, along with boron, aluminum, indium, thallium, and nihonium. So far, we've only talked about the A group elements. Now, let's look at the B group elements. So, to find the number of valence electrons in the A groups, all you do is look at the group number that it is in. The B groups are even easier. For all of the B group elements, we can assume that there are only two electrons in the valence shell. No matter which B group element you pick, it will be two valence electrons. So, for vanadium, two valence electrons. Ruthenium, two valence electrons. Platinum, two valence electrons. You don't even need to know which element I'm talking about. If you can find it on the periodic table and it's in group B, it's got two valence electrons. One thing to note is that there are never more than eight electrons in the valence shell. We can have more than eight in other shells, but in the valence shell, the maximum will be eight. It's going to be important that we recall how many electrons are present in the valence shell when we continue on with some drawings that we're going to be doing next. Also, we want to remember that number eight because it's really important in chemistry. Um, eight is kind of a magic number. It works out really well for a lot of what we're going to be doing. That is the maximum number of electrons that can be found in the valence shell. Here I'm going to show you why. So group 1A gets 1, 2A gets 2, all of the B group gets 2, then we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 valence electrons. Down here, these ones that we don't normally talk about in the F series, all are like the group D, and they're going to have 2 valence electrons. On the next video, you can see how we can use this to fill the shells and find out what the electronic configuration is for variety of elements.